Just, uh... What does this mean? I don't know what that means. Anyway. Um, yeah, just giving it a few minutes. I'm just making sure everything's okay. Get my notes. Okay, well, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Huh. <laughs> um, welcome to our 10 day challenge and I'm really excited for everyone to be here and remember that if you weren't able to come to the live, you can always catch the replay. We'll have that posted probably tomorrow um, when it's all ready to go. And so you'll be able to catch up on whatever we're talking about today. So I hope that that um, helps you out. Um, we're gonna start today with the very beginning of finding that authoritative, calm voice. You know the one that is like, we're going to leave now. We're going to get our books now. And instead of our kids throwing a temper tantrum, and we're constantly giving in to them, or we're yelling at them, get to bed, right? No, I was, um, oh gosh, well, we were still in Denver, so it's been like over a month, but I was coming out of a store, and there was a mom, and she had two girls. They looked like they were probably, I don't know, four and seven, something around there, and they were just yelling at each other in the parking lot, and the mom started screaming, I'm sick and tired of you yelling at each other. And here she is screaming. Well, the older one did not miss <laughs> the um, ir irony of it <laughs> and started laughing and said, but you're yelling. And started this. So then the girls were ganging up on the mom. It was hysterical. And I just kind of walked a little slower <laughs> so I could enjoy the show. Aren't I, <laughs> I kind of enjoy those shows um, and watching them. So anyway. There was a study that was done, and it was back in 2003. So it's an older study, but I think it's pretty accurate for where we are now. Um, they surveyed over a thousand parents, and they were asking them, among other things, do you yell at your kids? And <laughs> uh, what was it? Let's see, 90% <laughs> of parents admitted to yelling at their kids. The funny thing is that when they started dealing with older kids, tweens and teens and that, 100% <laughs> they yell at their kids. So I think it's pretty accurate for what happens today. We all yell sometimes, right? And sometimes, I'll be honest, it's appropriate to yell. Like they're running into the street and a car's coming. They're reaching for a hot stove and, or there's a pot there that is boiling or whatever. There are times when you do need to yell, no, 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 right? But if they're used to hearing you yell all the time, it's it's just water off a duck's back. They're like, oh yeah, she's yelling again. That's just the way she talks. And that might be a part of kids blowing you off. I hear people say, well, my kids don't listen unless I yell. But are they listening when you yell? I don't think so. And so you just get more and more frustrated and it, it just builds this whole thing of constant yelling and not just you yelling at your kids in frustration, then they start yelling at each other because in this family, that's how we communicate, right? Um, and maybe you're yelling back and forth with your spouse when you get frustrated. And it's funny how there are people who maybe would not have yelled, you know, before you had kids. You two got along great. <laughs> and the kids come and all of a sudden you start yelling at each other because you're getting more used to yelling. And so you're yelling at your kids and then you start yelling at each other. And so can you see this whole cycle that's going on? And and uh, it it just doesn't leave a good feeling in the home. So let's think about some things. Um, what are some reasons that 
parents do yell at their kids? Well, the number one is uh, either, well, it's that they're not listening. That's what parents say. They're not listening. And another one is that they're not moving fast enough. We're late, we've got to get going, and they've been procrastinating. Or maybe they are being destructive, and so you're going to yell at them. Maybe they're yelling at each other and you want them to stop, so we yell at them, right? There are tons of reasons that we yell at our kids. And so we know that it's really not effective because if it worked, our kids would do what they're supposed to do. But they, they ignore us a lot when we're the constant yellers. <clears throat> and then when we're yelling at our kids, what are we modeling for them? Are we showing that this is an appropriate way to manage conflict? to try and resolve issues is by yelling and screaming and sometimes saying very unkind things. We don't want that, right? But yet that's the that's what we're showing them. Think about even not just between you and your spouse, but what about you and your other family members? You may be an adult, all of you guys are adults, but siblings I've seen still yell at each other. I've seen adult children yelling at their parents. It makes, it makes no sense. It, it, it just shows that you are not in control of yourself because that's really all you can control is yourself. You can't scream at a child to stop having a tantrum and expect them to mind you. Part of it is they may not be able to stop it. They're that wound up. And so how can we make this work in a better way? And think about, how do you feel after you've yelled at your kids? No, oh, that was successful. <laughs> Is, <laughs> I never felt that way. Um, and I always felt bad about myself and like, ugh. And sometimes I would be even more frustrated at my kids because <laughs> you'd think, why did you make me yell? Why do I always have to yell at you? You don't have to yell at them. <laughs> So it's kind of a dichotomy there, isn't it? You don't have to yell at them. And so you can just speak to them, stand your ground. And if they're used to you yelling, a couple of things might happen. They might disobey because she, you're not yelling. You don't mean it. For an example, when I was really little, like three, I hadn't started kindergarten yet. So three or four. And my Grams was visiting, my mom's mom was visiting from Oregon. We lived in Berkeley at the time, or Oakland, in that area. And we went to the grocery store. Now back then, it was a whole different world, right? And it was very common for a parent to leave their child by the toy area in the grocery store. There were always those toys and you'd play with the toys and mom would go and do their shopping. And then when you go to check out, you would get your child and check and, and finish and head out. Well, um, my mom did that with us. And it was, like I said, it was very common back then. That was a very common thing to happen. And my mom was checking out and, and the checkout stand was just right across from where the toys, excuse me, were. And she said, they called me Debbie when I was little. It was, Debbie, it's time to go. And I just ignored her and played, you know. And she called me like three or four times and I just ignored her. And my grams came to me and said, Debbie, your mother's calling you. You need to go. And I looked at my grams and I said, oh, that's not her angry voice yet. <laughs> I had learned that there was a certain voice, a certain tone, and I'm sure my mom wasn't using it in front of her mom wanting to sound like she was nice or whatever, but I have been trained even by that age that unless mom's using this certain tone, I still had time, I could ignore her. So what are we teaching our kids then? If we say something once, we mean it, we don't yell it. You might want to, well, and we'll talk about this later, but you know, you're gonna want to maybe give them some notice or whatever, we'll get into that later, but there are things that you can do that you don't say it four times and you don't say it in a loud voice. You say it calmly. This is what we're doing. 
and then you follow through with it though right then and there um <clears throat> let's see oh so there's three types of yelling then that we really consider one is just raising your voice like dinner <laughs> correct time to come in and the kids are out running around you know bring down an extra towel i need an extra towel so you're just raising your voice so that you can be heard but you're not angry yelling right the next one is anger based we know what that looks like and then there's one that's danger based though and that's when we're talking about the running into the street reaching for a hot stove you see your child talking to a stranger at the park and that's like oh no 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 um so there are those kinds of yelling and then you hear and i and i've had families where that's just part of their culture their culture is big voices big personalities big what everything and and that's fine but there's a difference between again raising your voice laughing and yelling you know and then when you're serious and you want them to listen to you it's kind of interesting when you bring it down now that's something different and wait she's not yelling <laughs> maybe i better listen <laughs> and in fact it's funny that a few years ago when i was teaching in kindergarten and I would get quieter when I wanted my kids to really pay attention. And they were sitting at circle time and they were all just kind of coming in. We hadn't really started yet. They were putting away their things, coming and sitting. And so I started doing the, if you can hear me, touch your nose, you know? And then they, they you see the other kids start doing it. And, and then before long, everybody's in. Well, they came in and they were sitting down, but they were still not quite settled. And I said, it's really important that we get started now or else we're going to be late for our lunch and we don't want to do that. And <laughs> one of the little girls said, guys, she's quiet. That means she's really, really mad. <laughs> the more quiet I got, I guess, the more serious. And they were all from cultures that had big voices, big personalities, and there was a lot of yelling that went on and that was their culture. But sometimes, not sometimes, very often, they were also being yelled at for everything. Whether it's come to dinner, whether it's time to go to bed, whether it's getting your you know, seatbelt, whatever, everything was yelling. And so imagine that and then all of a sudden you're quiet and you're starting to give instructions or trying to get their attention that's something new and different and you'll see them starting to turn around it just depends on the kind of background that your family has and the personalities and all of those things that go on so anyway um there's a a document that when you go on to you know you log on to the little hearts academy and you can click on and once you're logged on you have access to um we have the thing where you could signed up to get on the on the on the Facebook page and then we also have something called check it out you have access to that if you're having trouble getting to that let me know I'll make sure you get it I can even email it to you if that's what it is but check it out is a two-page document and it's there for you to help because your homework assignment for today is to really track how much are you actually yelling at your kids. You may be doing better than you thought once you start tracking it, but or you may be doing worse than what you thought, or maybe you're thinking, yeah, that's about right. <laughs> and on the second page, it's like, here's some more spaces for you to mark when you're yelling. Don't worry, it happens. There's no judgment here. We're all just kind of working together to help each other. And so um, we're going to just check. It's all set up so that all you have to do is you can, you write the day that you're starting, that's at the top. And then you might need to write a time, right? And then you're just checking things. Um, like what was going on? Were you hungry? Was it bedtime? Was it da, 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 da. And then, and then you can keep track of not only how often are you yelling, but what are you yelling about the most? 
Is there a common theme? And then we can start really looking at what you need to do based on the data that you're getting from tracking yourself. And so until you've got really an honest and a clear picture of what's going on, it's hard to say, well, let's try this, let's try that, because it really does help you to focus on, okay, it's right when I get home from work, I'm tired, I'm trying to get dinner done, and I'm yelling a lot. Or you might say, oh man, the mornings are horrible. The afternoons are a lot better, but the mornings are horrible. Okay, so now we can look at, well, what were you yelling them about? What needs to change? What can we do to help you so that you know what to do when you want to be successful in the morning? So you want to go ahead and get that and and download it and then start working on it tomorrow. And like I said, just uh, you can either message me, you can... Um, I'm having a brain You can email me. And so it's just DJ Stutz at littleheartsamericausa.com. And so I'll put that in the comments below if you want to just email me. But there's always message. There's tons of ways to get a hold of me. So uh, just go ahead and let me know. And then I will get it to you right away. And so that you can look at it and then plan for what you're going to get started on tomorrow. But we really want to know first, the first thing when we're looking at ending the yelling is what is your contribution, right? What are your triggers? What are the things that just, I've had it, I'm done, and you, then you start yelling. So you wanna be sure that you know what your triggers are. And is it in the morning? And they're not, they're, they're just moving slow. They're moving slow. And it seems like the bigger hurry you're in, the slower they're going to move. Does that sound familiar to anyone? Well, that's actually a very common phenomena that we'll be talking about in one of our other lives. So you want to be here for that. And then recognize when the problem is you and not your child. So you're tired. You've had the bad day at work. You're exhausted. You're hungry. You've had an argument with a friend or a teacher or whatever and you're the one that's upset and you're taking that out on your kids and we don't like to think that we do that the truth is we do <laughs> everybody does it's just part of life but then once you get to a point where you can really recognize where am I on this you know why am I yelling have you ever had a time when all of a sudden you realize I'm yelling when did I start yelling I did that all the time. <laughs> and I'd be like, wait a minute, when did I start yelling? This is ridiculous. I'm yelling. I don't mean to yell. And I'm saying this out loud. And my kids are then, oh, okay, we're going to do better. <laughs> and it doesn't mean that I have to give in or whatever. I can just say, okay, I need to calm down. Let me get a breath. <sighs> all those same things that we teach our kids, right? Let me take a breath. Let me see, you know, what I've got going on and then, but we still need to get dinner done. We still need to get homework done. We still need to get whatever done, but there's some things that we can do to set it up so that it is more successful for both you and your kids. Because really, the only person you can truly control in this world is you. And so... When you're setting the right example, when you're working with your kids and talking to them in a calm manner, even when you're upset and they know you're upset and you can show that you're upset, but you can show it in another way that isn't threatening, that isn't almost, a, it can be very aggressive, even if you're not hitting, sometimes we do hit them. I did spank my kids sometimes. <laughs> It happens. <laughs> but <clears throat> sometimes we do get to where a point where a child thinks, oh, I'm not safe right now, right? So we want to make sure that we are getting ourselves to a spot where we can do the right thing for ourselves because we're going to feel better about ourselves when we handle it well and our kids are going to feel better about themselves. And 
they are going to learn so much about conflict resolution, about compromise, about, um, you know, taking control of yourself. And they will learn that from you. And so it's something to really think about. And think about, am I acting on information? Am I preparing or am I reacting? Because I didn't get things set up in a proper way so that now it's all falling apart. And you know what? Things happen. And sometimes things fall apart, even with the best laid plans of mice and men, right? These things will fall apart. But when you've gotten yourself to a point where things may fall apart, but you can still have it together, most of the time, like I said, we're never going to stop yelling completely. It's just unrealistic. Even for the calmest parent, <laughs> it happens. And so, okay, it's nothing you need to beat yourself up on, but it is something that you can learn from. You're going to think about, okay, I yelled here. What happened? Why was I yelling? And then what could I have done differently? And then there you are. So tomorrow, we don't have a live but I, I have a live on my regular um, Imperfect Heroes podcast because it'll be Tuesday and I'll be talking about our episode for the week, which is with the rabbi, which is so cool. But anyway, we will be talking and then on Wednesday, same time, same time as this, we will be meeting again and maybe you'll be able to share some of the things that were going on with you as you filled out the form and really tracking how much am I yelling, when am I yelling, what am I saying, <laughs> you know, all those things. We'll have more information and we'll be able to move forward. So there you go. I'm excited for you and we'll see you in the next video. Good night.